This is John Bunkley, and you're listening to Rock at Night. Welcome to another episode of the Rocket Night Podcast. This is Vlad. Our guest today is a celebrated veteran of both the ska and swing scenes nationally and here in Metro Detroit. A true Renaissance man, he's also an accomplished painter with interests in a variety of arts and disciplines. He's got a new EP out now that's a sumptuous pastiche of rock steady and soul. And we're thrilled that he's joining us today. A warm Rocket Night welcome to John Bunkley. Hey, what's going on, Vlad? Good to be here. We're thrilled to have you here. John, devotees of ska in this area, in this region, will certainly know of you and know about your work. But your story deserves to be told to Rocket Knights International audience. Tell us a little bit about your history. Uh, my ska history, well, I started in doing music in like 1985, 1986, when I started a band in Detroit called Gangster Fun. And we started, and we, we were the only ones in the area doing it. One of the few in the Midwest, definitely the only ones in Michigan. And we played lots of shows, and we sold out shows to like thousands and thousands of people. And we were the band here. We were the party band. Yeah. And it was a good time, and we lasted. You know, I stopped playing with them around 94, and they kept going. And, you know, but that's my history is playing ska, grew up, born and raised in Detroit, raised on soul music from my mom, my dad, and, you know, and that's what, that's basically it, you know. It's an old soul guy who went to ska, punk shows, and soul and funk shows, you know. That's classic Detroit. I remember from back when I lived here in the day that it was very common to see these intersects and, and diff- people who are maybe different audiences today have you know be in the, the same kind of intersect and they would be fans of northern soul of ska and so on very very much like what you would see in europe today and it's really uh harding to hear about this i'm sort of getting nostalgic here and hearing about it but uh i can very vividly remember how how it was in the day like that so that brings us to her to your sensuous new release sunshine and chocolate without divulging too much i can attest to this being a deeply satisfying and evocative listen at least for me how did this ep come about well i've always just wrote songs so i was writing songs and i'm like these are pretty good songs you know i like them you know now my friend eric who's in this band called the tellways he's like you got to put this stuff out i'm like yeah you know then what happens he's like just put it out i'm like okay and then covid happened the pandemic happened so i just started demoing up the tracks you know, and just sending them to him. Mm-hmm. And then he would just tweak them, tweak them, send them back to me. And I would tweak them, tweak them some more, put a keyboard line, put a guitar line. And then he would put a bass line. Then he had a drummer come over who ended up, was in a band called Leaving Lifted. And then he ended up joining the tw- Tellways later and being in Leaving Lifted at the same time. And we just, the three of us just kind of compiled the tracks together, you know, but me being like the initial writer of mm-hmm. them and then just bringing... I like to think of myself of it's like trying to be a little bit Elvis Costello about it, and those guys were my attractions. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah, so trying to do that, you know. And it just went from there, and we were just locked up and not even seeing each other, really, just writing music remotely. And then when I got it, I'm like, okay, it's done. Let me send it out to be mastered. I sent it to my friend, good friend Dave Feeney, who owns, owns a stip, uh, who plays with. Uh, plays with Jack White and play he just and mm-hmm. he plays with Loretta Lynn and had sent it to a studio to master it. Sent it to my other friend Mark Dancy, who's a graphic artist. I painted the cover, but he did mm-hmm. the layout, he did the sound garden albums. Right, right. So Mark and ran a zine here called Motor Booty. So I had these collections of friends through my history of being a Detroiter in the art scene. And then it just all came together and, and now I have an EP. I just sent it out locally to be pressed. 
this, you know, old record pressing company here in Detroit who did Motown records, who did George Clinton records, Parliament Funkadelic records, and now I have an EP. You know, just it's easy like that now. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's DIY, but I guess you also have a sense of like the magic that happens when all these things come together like that. Yeah, I think I'm lucky that I have a a good, you know, a good group of friends around me that believe in me. You know, that think mm-hmm. I can think I can do it. You know, so if you have a support system, you know, it just kind of drives you to do it more. And I didn't want to do a singer songwriter album. I mean, I could have, mm-hmm. but I just didn't. I felt like we've been like in such depressing times recently, you know, for like, a, like especially like the last four years and COVID hit, five years and COVID hit. It's like I kind of just want to make a dancey record, something that you could kind of like be happy, just happy love songs and stuff and dance songs, that, like a summertime, feel good summertime album. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that was the goal, and I hopefully I've, I achieved it. We'll see. Oh, it, it's very palpable. I mean, I when I first listened to it. I sense not just romantic love, but I sense a sense of love in terms of people. And there was a very deep organic sense to that. Yeah, if you don't have that, what do you have? You know, it's like, I mean, we can like, I, don't get me wrong. I kind of like I'm one of the few guys that really love being at home and just creating, you know, right, and right. just like not being hindered by like seeing people and not doing so. I really got into being, writing music. But now that it's starting to like, chill out with that it's great to see like family friends and you know and hopefully you know maybe play a show in the future you know we'll see keep your fingers crossed but you know i i talk to many artists on this channel who have followed a very similar trajectory of rediscovery and reemergence in the face of the pandemic uh did the isolation of the pandemic ultimately awaken performance and recording sensibilities within you no i can honestly say it didn't it gave me time. I wasn't, um, you know, hindered with going to a day job or just, you know, people saying like, hey, do this for me. Help me with this project. I was at home and I could work on it anytime I want. I have a big house. I have a recording studio. Yeah. I have an art studio. I can do anything I want in it at any time of night. And I did, you know. So it gave me time. But uh, like I said, I think I work best when I'm just at home and thinking if I'm just reading a good book, watching a good movie, or just doing nothing, just sitting and just looking at the rain or something, I'm good, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Sounds like you're able to channel a lot of things into your ultimately, whether it's you channeling into your paintings or, or your music. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, like, I kind of like to look at the glasses like, you know, half full rather than half empty even though like things can really bring you down but you got to slap yourself in the face and say like yo snap out of it you know <laughs> it's gonna get better better get better it's not gonna get better why even be here you know so you can, you better like hope that it's gonna get better exactly. and if nothing else you know why do we do art why do i write music i write it because it makes me feel better mm-hmm. you know i write it it's not i don't write it for the acceptance or rejection from other people Mm -hmm. you know i just write it because it's what i want to do at the time i really do you know i've always have done that you know and if people get joy out of it of course that makes me feel good you know if people don't get it that's cool you know Mm -hmm. you know it's like maybe it wasn't meant for you let's help help you find something that you do like there is something out there that you do like might not be me but it's going to be something else which is awesome as well as I mentioned earlier, Sunshine and Chocolate is a new, really nice intersect of rock steady and soul. At least I heard that. With you being a Detroiter, you probably are especially nicely equipped to imbue what's ultimately an international genre now, like rock steady, with unique facets of our own signature variety of soul locally, which is, of course, Motown. Did any idioms or have any idioms of Motown, since you mentioned that your father and your parents were into soul, have those kind of infuse either musically or maybe emotionally in uh, your production of this album or in your music in general 100 percent, without a doubt you know i mean my favorite songwriters are holland dozer holland you know um my favorite songwriter is curtis mayfield he's not mm-hmm. a, he's not a detroiter but him he's just a beautiful songwriter especially with the stuff with the impressions and but you know i'm a temptations guy i'm a supremes guy you know i'm marvelettes lover you know mm-hmm. and 
I will always be that. I love Marvin Gaye. I love Stevie Wonder. Love, love, love Stevie Wonder. And I um, love Aretha Franklin. You know, I love Atlantic Soul. Soul is me. You know, yeah. it's what I was raised on. You know, before anything else, I was raised on soul music. You know, it started with soul here. Yeah. Seeing that you're a painter and aficionado of, I guess, foreign film, do any parts of these spheres inform what you do musically or maybe uh, thematically? Well, I think film is interesting. It's hard to, like, transcribe film into uh, into music for me, unless I'm scoring something, which, mm-hmm. you know, which I've done, like, oh. scoring, scored independent films and scored, like, you know, like... Uh, museum museum exhibits and things like that. I have done a lot of that, mm-hmm. but um, but when I think of like film and you know there are films I do like and it does make me think of music, but a lot of the films I like are quite depressing, you know. So this this time it didn't happen like that, yep. you know, because you know I like you know early I like Jim Jarmusch say and like yeah. Stranger Than Paradise. Yeah, it's like, one of my, yeah, like one of my favorite happy films. So it's Willy Wonka, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> so I can go from like that, you know, or like eight and a half by Fellini, you know, so I can go all over the place with, with films or, you know, so it's crazy, you know, um, but art does inspire me more like just like seeing like uh, Romare Beard and uh, collages and like, you know, Jacob's paintings and you know, I think of like, especially like uh, paintings that depict like urban environments and and people. You know, in in city situations, having a good time and gatherings and family reunions, or things things that like really modern soul singers, like old soul singers, sung about. Like I said, like Stevie Wonder or like say like Jill Scott. Right. You know, they sing about that. I kind of like, think I sing about that too, you know? Those are the things I like. It's like about people in, in the city. It's about, yeah. you know, and... Community it, and family. It's about community, family, people in the city. It's about people that you love, people that you want to hang with, you know? And that's what this project is about, you know? This, this chapter, you know? Indeed. And lastly, now that you have this new EP hitting the streets, do you have any feel for where your music might take you next, either maybe near term, like performance, another EP or a single? Well, another EP is almost done. Yeah, it's in the same vein. It's like very much in the same vein, more rock steady ish. Yeah, I could see me playing some shows. It's like I haven't played a show as a solo artist before, you know, so that would be something very new for me. I have the tools to do it. I have the people who will want to back me up and sure. do it. So, I mean, if the opportunity exists, if anybody wants me to do it, give me a shout out. I'll do it. You know, it's, it, it sounds fun as long as it could be a good time for all. Yeah, yeah. Consider that a all points bulletin to those in the audience. John is listening and uh, maybe available. Uh, lastly, can you tell our listeners where they can find your new release and how they can follow what you're doing? Well, you can follow me on Facebook, of course, uh, or Instagram at j.kbunkley. Or uh, you can buy, you can find my uh, release on Bandcamp at the moment. But the, uh, the vinyl is going to be out probably like the first week of August of 2021. But it's been selling really fast. So I, and it's going to be limited edition. I didn't trust myself to like get a lot made, sure. you know, so I only like said 300 and, and, and out. <laughs> and that will be it. I pro- probably so. And then on the next EP will probably be the same. You know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. You know, it's always a we'll see. Of but course, it's just a band course. camp thing. Right. And hopefully it'll start get, getting played on Spotify soon. You know, I've been flipping a coin about doing that. But I think I'll do it. I think mm-hmm. I'll bite the bullet and just what the heck. So you you're sold to the entire Yeah, giant. yeah. You know, I don't know, man. I've just been kind of holding out, you know. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm good either way. You know, I'm just kind of like. I'm like liking doing it the DIY style. I like the low key availability of it. I think it just keeps it fresh for me right now. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, what I've heard from it, it really has a really strong organic vibe to it, or organic love to that, and it 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 speaks at an almost subliminal level, a very subconscious, deeper, latent level, and uh, something that I think many people will hear. I think one of the keys is that we didn't really use. We used all old instruments. We all real Hammond organs and no, like, you know, 
not high tech stuff, real far fizas, very old vintage guitars, right. you know, old amps, you know. That's how Eric and I wanted to approach this when, mm-hmm. when we produced it, you know. And, uh, and I think it worked, you know. We just really want to, but I still, like I said, I just don't hearken back to the old stuff. I really like a lot of new soul music coming out, you know. So I like to like think about what they're doing and you know, I'm not Jamaican, you know, so, I mean, but I do like rock steady, I do like punk, I like post-punk, I like soul, you know, so I'm a conglomerate of all those things, you know. John Bunkley, master practitioner of rock steady, soul, ska, and love and music. Thank you so much for joining us today, John. Oh, man, thank you for having me. It was great to meet you and hang out with you. You're listening to Rock at Night. The introductory song, Get On Down, is from blues artist Billy Bass Alford. Look for his music at ReverbNation.com.